sitting. Okay. Oh, thank you very much for this uh, wonderful uh, opportunity and a warming invitation and the hospitality. Thanks to the Professor Bazgago, one of my best friends. Uh, uh, it's a great honor and a great joy to be here uh, with you to uh, deliver a small lecture on East Asian uh, Garden. Uh, first of all, I apologize for speaking in English. I love very much your Spanish language, beautiful language. One day, in the next time maybe, I hope I could deliver in Spanish. I promise you. <laughs> All right. Uh, as you know, the title is the East Asian Garden. It's so vast, so immense subject. Uh, so until this morning, I was very afraid <laughs> how I could deliver some essential ideas uh, about uh, this uh, cultural uh, heritage. Well, in general, you know, as you know, I think you are the real specialist of garden, not me, because I am a, a, a linguist, a semitian, and a, a visual uh, uh, culture or cultural theory. Uh, the garden studies were dominated by the, by the main uh, uh, subject areas, landscape design uh, or uh, horticulture or urban design. Uh, it's very important because this tendency is very uh, so natural uh, because the garden studies is, should be practical and empirical uh, and scientific. This is not my uh, position. However, uh, since some decades, some 20 years, especially in France, because I get my PhD in, uh, in France, in Paris, so I'm very accustomed to the uh, French humanities. I translated many uh, uh, books, for, for example, Jacques Derrida of Grammatology. I uh, met him, I realized an uh, uh, interview with him. I realized that there are a new flourishing research and the publication on the garden from the semiotic or history of the humanities point of view. Uh, if you adopt the humanities point of view, uh, you should be interested in the history, uh, in particular meaning and value. Uh, this is my position. So I'm now in the technical questions. I simply would like to share some moments with you why the garden is important, what's the value of the garden, and how the East Asian people uh, did deliver some contributions to humanities. Well, this is the geography of the East Asian Garden. I think that all of you know very well this geographical location. But when I was studied in the 80s, you know, when I asked where is Korea <laughs> to my uh, French uh, young students, you know, you don't believe me. Some people, many students, they could locate where is Korea. <laughs> but now it has changed. So when I, it's East Asia, uh, usually it includes three main countries, China and Korea and Japan. So basically, Korea, China is a, is a source of East Asian civilization. Nobody could record, uh, to deny. And then Korea, as you see, uh, like uh, Italy, is a peninsula. So what's the destiny of a, um, a nation uh, as a peninsula? Uh, for me, it's a double, double laws. First of all, Korean people received the, the Korea as Chinese civilization in very early time. Almost in third or fourth centuries, introducing Chinese scripts, Chinese uh, characters, or something like that. And they transmitted this knowledge, this culture, to Japan. Concerning the gardens, I think you should know two places very important. In China, Suzhou. 
near to the Shanghai. Of course, in Beijing, there are some beautiful gardens, but uh, almost over 10 gardens were, were designated as a world heritage by UNESCO. And it's a good chance because if you visit Suzhou, you can enjoy uh, in three days over almost the most important uh, ch uh, Chinese gardens. That was my case. So I beat it several times, not now because it's, you know, <laughs> it's a good time. And concerning Japan, I recommend very strongly Kyoto. Kyoto is very important because Kyoto I visited almost uh, 15, 15 times or 20 times. Uh, I can remember how many times I visited Kyoto because new to Seoul. But for me, Kyoto is very important, not only for garden studies, but to the whole civilization of East Asia. Why? Because in terms of preservation, I can recommend another city in East Asia comparable to Kyoto. It is so well conserved, so it's really a real reference to understand the East Asian civilization. God help us because when uh, during the Second World War, the General MacArthur was hesitating to bombard the city or not, but you know, American army very, uh, very civilized uh, army. Though, <laughs> so <laughs> we could, uh, yeah, c uh, conserve this city. Kyoto is not only important for Japanese people, but whole humanities. This is my point of view. Why this is a little uh, episode when Trump uh, threatened to destroy the, the heritage, world heritage of Iran, I was very shocked because I loved Iran. I, uh, last year I, I stayed two, two months and I delivered 10 lectures there. I love Iranian people. How Bavarian this idea, because the world heritage is not simply Iranian people, but it's the, it should be conserved in the name of the humanity. Uh, I, so my person is very quite universal. But in, in, the, in case of Korea, I can uh, uh, designate one special place, Seoul or in the Mokpo or other uh, uh, certain cities, but I can find any specific city uh, where we can find uh, intensively the huge amount of uh, gardens. So I prepared just three uh, iconic gardens. For example, in Suzhou, this is World Heritage uh, designation. Uh, we call Humble Administrator's Garden, Chol uh, Jongwon in Korean, and P1 in the Seoul, in the Changdeok Palace, and the Gingakuji Temple in uh, Gyodo. So today, I will attempt to deliver some ideas of the nature of this garden on the structural meaning or something like that. First of all, I would like to uh, evoke a contrast concerning the aesthetic and artistic status of garden in Western and Eastern civilization. I think there's a very crucial difference. In Western culture, the aesthetic status of garden is quite ambiguous. To be honest, remain at the periphery as a marginal art. On the contrary, in East Asian civilization, the artistic value of garden was very closely related to poetry, calligraphy, and the painting in East Asia. Usually, the very important schema in East Asian civilization, three arts, poetry, calligraphy, and painting, is so intimately related, we can separate each other. There's a big difference. So, you know, in Western civilization, writing on the other hand, and image, the other part. But in 
East Asian people, there is no big difference separation between calligraphy, writing, and images. But my conclusion is that we should, uh, uh, we should uh, mention another very important art. Is this is garden. For me, garden is should be mentioned first major art in East Asian civilization. Because those activity, artist calligraphy, were done in the garden. This is why it's so important. So, in conclusion, the artistic and aesthetic status of art, a uh, garden in East Asian civilization, should be considered as a pivotal, crucial importance of art. So I, I uh, talk to the, uh, the contrast, you know, there are many, many gardens in the world. First of all, in French garden, and uh, uh, Toscana garden, and uh, uh, <laughs> you, have, you should be proud of Alhambra garden, Granada, and Iranian uh, Fin garden in Kashan. Of course, I visited all gardens. Once again, I'd like to emphasize on the nature of my lecture. I am not a specialist of garden. Uh, as a semiotician, uh, the main job is to study the value and the meaning of the signification. Uh, I visited many times garden. So just I would like to uh, deliver some lectures as a love of a garden, not as a real, real species of a garden. So whole humanities has created the gardens in everywhere. But according to the uh, French scholar Jacques Benoit Méchant, Méchant, I don't know if this is translated in uh, Spanish or not. It, I found a Korean translation, very uh, good translation. This book inspired me very strongly. I think he's, he's a forgotten scholar in France because he, in one time, for, during some uh, period, he was a collaboration with Nazi or Pro or something like that. I don't know much about that. But this scholar is, for me, is, I read many, many books on gardens, but I can't compare any books to, to the quality of, the, the, of this, uh, this book. According to him, only six people have created the garden in a high level. Well, it was Chinese, Japanese, and the East Asian civilization, and Persian, and Arabs, and Arab world, or Muslim world, and in Europe, only two nations, two people, French and Toscan, or more generally Italian. I don't know you should agree or not, but <laughs> this is not my idea. But and I, I am a little bit pity because uh, he in his book he don't mention any uh, one single line or about the Korean Garden. Well, Korean Garden is in Western uh, audience is totally neglected garden in relation to in considering the quality of the Korean Garden. I don't know why because two big to big heritage of China, Japan, or, uh, uh, and now still dominating in the international scene, Korean Garden can't find any place. To publish, I just published uh, last, uh, last December, uh, in my life, the first time, the first publication, first article about the East Asian Garden in Korean. And to realize this paper, I uh, visited uh, during one week uh, with my car. Uh, yeah, I was, I was very uh, happy. Uh, and why this uh, beauty is unknown in the Western people. So I would like to show some images. But before that, why I was inspired and impressed by uh, his insight? Well, 
he picked up, he showed the most important essential words concerning the garden. For him, the garden is less a retreat than the kitchen of a secret shelves. It's beautiful. The garden rests a rest, simple rest, than an awakening. All like a Buddhist. So away from other passions of his life, he pursued the image of happiness. He, the pronoun he is designated also Meshan, but also you and me. Why we love the garden? Because we could pursue the image of happiness there. Because of love of gardens, he says, should not be confused with the love of nature or sight. What's that, the garden? Yes, the garden is a love charged with the deeper human truth where laughter is only a sign. The peace of the, this shaded space, the gardens, has the intensity of poem, the beauty of a work of art. Finally, some kind of metaphysics of garden. Why garden? He replied, to the man conscious of being mortal. This is very important. Everybody should be die. Uh, so we are conscious of this uh, mortality. So human being need some beaches, metamorphosis and distant serenity of the lost paradise. And uh, because of the limited time, I couldn't uh, continue this kind of uh, uh, semiotic or humanistic uh, beaches. But just simply as a cue, I would like to pose uh, one, one very essential question. Why is the people created a garden? Why? In case of uh, the Persian people or Arabs or and Western people who were influenced by the transcendental God, you can reply, you human being in, in, in Western side want to create a paradise, lost a paradise. Paradise is etymologically garden means paradise. But for Chinese people, during 3,000 years, they couldn't create any kind of concept of God, any kind of transcendental ideas. It's an amazing story. In Korean, now, you know, among 50 uh, million people, the help of Korean is Catholic or Protestant or Christians. It's very amazing people because neither Chinese, neither Japanese, finally they could not introduce the uh, Christianism. So Korean case is an exceptional case. Anyhow, just two, two uh, just ideas why. I think the Chinese people, they need a kind of a paradise. They need a kind of a paradise, but not this is transcendental entity. And for the Japanese, why? Japanese people created it almost as seven, eight centuries. One thing is very, uh, should be clear, uh, really uh, uh, revoked to understand the, uh, the nature of Japanese civilization. Japanese civilization was dominated by the samurai by the sword, not by the pen. It's a big difference. So if you look at the Japanese history, well, you should be crazy. This whole history was a world, world, blood, blood, blood. A very violent history. It's a big difference because in China, in Korea, we adopted national konku, national examination, to select the most uh, smart and most intelligent young people to rule out, to govern the nation. But did, this was not the case for Japanese. So one of the reasons to create the garden for Japan, in, uh, for Japanese people, they need a peace. They need to stop this infinite world, infinite blood game. So I, I just evoked to do some reasons why they need to create the gardens.
There are many gardens in Western, but if you look at the attitude of Western thinkers or philosophers to the garden, well, in preparing my paper, it's very interesting because, in fact, they did not, they don't want to recognize a full status of garden. This is manifest in the Hegel. Hegel's, for Hegel's gardening reliance on nature make it an imperfect art. That means for Hegel, the garden should not be considered as a really high art because it is relied on a copy, it mimesis. It's a simple replicate, replication of the art. The other reason is the garden is so practical, so pragmatic, so it's a very imperfect specimen of nature. It's, for Asian people, it's a very bizarre, very uh, interesting argument. But it, I'm not special of that, but this uh, contrast between East Asian uh, people and the Western uh, aesthetics, and modern aesthetics. By the way, if you look at the East Asian accomplishment, you should be surprised. First of all, to understand the historical garden in East Asia, one should really mention this very important book, Sakudeiki in Korean, Chakjeonggi. Sakudeiki is the first book on garden in the world. All these published Japanese text. The author is very uh, controversial, but uh, that's Ivana Dushijuna. This is most oldest garden planning text in the world, written in the 11th century. And how about Korea? Korea, as you know, is totally unknown in the Western world. So I rediscovered, discovered personally a great Korean scholar, Gozan Yun Sondo. I visited these places in November. The civilian quarter and the poet. You know, he he was ex expulsed, expulsed from the court and he consecrated his whole life to the construction of the garden in the south part of the garden and in the island of Bogilto. For almost 40 years, he constructed, constructed garden, garden gardens, even in the mountains. This is a very unique, unique uh, 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 approach. Even in the, in the mountain, he constructed a garden. And the name Dongcheon Sokshil came from the Dongcheon Bokji, which refers to an, an exampled place of scenic beauty where Taoist hermit dwells. Dongcheon Sokshil. I climb, climb up this place and I stayed almost two hours to be a Taoist hermit. <laughs> what he was a place. He is a place for meditation, and there he wrote many, many poems too, under the moon. Yeah. Also, I found many iconographic works of the garden. For the So Se one, I hope I could uh, deliver some images of the So Se one. What about China? Yes, China is a very important book. Yuan Ye translated the garden trees or craft of gardens in 1631. Very important book. Well, this monography is garden architecture, but this work, well, how different between Sekugakai and this Yuan? Well, I read two books, I compared two books, contents of two books. The work is primarily focused on architectural features, the Chinese books, Yuan Ye, rather than natural features. Contrasts have been drawn between this and other classic works of East Asian garden, such as Sakue Deiki, Japanese 
uh, Heian period. Of, um, but you cannot generalize because in the face of more advanced understanding of the last concrete chapter, chapter 10, he treated very beautifully a uh, good argument about the nature. The last chapter, Jiejing or Chagyong. The most important concept, I think it is very useful for the modern uh, uh, architects because uh, in Metz and France, there's new Saint Pompidou, you know. Where uh, the, the Japanese architect is uh, uh, the name of the, the uh, 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 Metz uh, Pompidou Center? I realized, because of, there's two architects, Japanese, uh, and the uh, French, but the Japanese architect applied exactly this concept. Well, I, I, I explained to my French colleagues, and he did not understand about <laughs> charging. It's, uh, it's a simple uh, background landscape. It's very important. One of the most essential concept of uh, East Asian Garden, yeah, I could say that charging, jiejing. Well, if you, uh, I can find any uh, exact word, but borrowing scenery or borrowing in any case, things like that. The text presents Jiejing not as a single design idea, borrowing scenery, as it is usually believed, rather it deals with the essence of landscape design philosophy in its entirety. The ever changing moods and appearances of landscape in full action are understood by the also as an independent function that becomes an agent for garden making. So, this kind of gauging, borrowing scenery, for example, in, 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 in the right, right side is a typical Chinese garden, and on your right side, a Japanese uh, borrowed uh, or borrowing sceneries in the uh, Japanese garden. So in whole gardens of East Asia, this principle of jiejing, cha gyeong, borrowing scenery, is applied very beautifully. Yeah. So in this principle, the object and the subject uh, as either the landscape or the garden maker shift continuously moving towards the conclusion. Landscape and the garden maker are both object and the subject and are interchangeable. To be able to make a garden, the garden maker needs to melt with the landscape on the side, while natural phenomena become mnemonics for common knowledge as expressed in well-known passage in classic literature or poetry. So, remember the word, you know, sing word, what does it mean? Yes, the key word to understand the East Asian garden is ecology of nature. It's very important, including man, which motivates and moves design. So I, I just showed the three uh, uh, gardens in Chinese garden, uh, Chinese garden in the middle, Korean garden, and on your uh, right side, uh, the Japanese garden. So section that was the introduction. Now uh, uh, I'd like to uh, share some moments in, moments in some details uh, about the nature of East Asian garden art. I chose three keywords, ecology, and aesthetics, and poetics. First of all, in East Asian Garden, I found it a very exquisite blend of contagious and artificiality. In other words, it's very harmony between nature and culture. The essence of East Asian garden art can be concentrated above all with natural philosophy, ecological poetic thinking, and aesthetic anthropology. This is my theory. These three dimensions are embedded in the conception of the space of the garden. 
The natural view that created the East Asian spatial art is also a core principle and element found in the ideological foundations of East Asian civilization. Whole area from literature, thought, tradition, art, culture, food, whole areas of East Asian civilization were dominated by this kind of ideological uh, foundation. So ecological thinking in Asia can be interpreted as unifying idea of heaven, man, and earth. Well, for me, I'm very interested in the architecture. I think three kinds of architecture humanity uh, have invented. First thing is that East Asian architecture is totally, totally harmonious. In China, Korea, Japan, you can find any higher building than three floors concerning the traditional uh, architecture because they could not invent the high sophisticated techniques to build as a good like that. No, no, no. The East Asian people have, it, have the full potentiality to create the pyramid even the, like that. And the second model, I think, is the pyramid model. It's a pyramid is a show human capacity against the law of the gravity. You know, it is a two, two, two different kinds of architecture. One is absolutely you should, human being should be harmonized with nature. It's the first and last principle. So we could not build high, high, higher. It's totally, uh, uh, don't, it doesn't make sense. And pyramid as a goti. I don't know what the motivation. And the third category for me, I think, is architecture of Islamic architecture. When I visited the first time the, in Iran, the doom, because Persian people were inventor of the, the, this doom. Doom was, does it mean? Doom, if you enter doom, he created infinity of interior spaces. That was a very spiritual experience and very important experience. How they get idea to create an infinite of space, you know, limited space. So we can suggest two principles that govern the aesthetic perception of East Asians to grasp before carrying out the symmetric reading of garden art, the highest peak of East Asia. First, in contrast to other civilization, aesthetic man in East Asia made an effort to perceive beauty in nature and admire nature. This is also confirmed by the fact that East Asian civilization is a place where the highest level of aesthetic and the cultural achievement of natural landscape is achieved when examining the cultural history of landscape. For example, can you imagine that I evoked the national examination, national concours to select the elite, high elite. This national system, examination system, uh, uh, has existed uh, almost 2,000 years. So all scholars prepared to pass this examination. One of the requirements was that poem. You can imagine. If you apply this rule to be a high functionary or high uh, state of man, you should, could write poem. But for East Asian people, there's an absolute requirement. Without point in mind how to govern the other peoples, it's impossible. Of course, calligraphy is a, a, another requirement, but you should, you could write poems. But this is not my theory. Augustin Bach, a great French geographer or orientalist, one of the most important scholars on the Beja landscape and uh, even uh, gardens, he demonstrated among whole civilization, the East Asian civilization was the most developed country in concerning in uh, landscape. Why? First of all, they created a huge literature, poems or prose, and they theorized, even theorized, 
and they created many, many kinds of landscape painting. So according to him, there's only one civilization which uh, is enough to, uh, uh, to the highest, the highest level of the uh, civilization of Beijing or the garden. Second, in East Asia, the aesthetic man have also given significant value to the perception of beauty through certain forms of perfection created through artificial action. In particular, this kind, the second tendency is more evident than in Korea, China, in, the, in Japan. The Japanese civilization, you know, they really appreciate the small thing, very infinitely small thing. This is one of the uh, genius, uh, genius, talent, national talent of Japanese peoples. So what is northwards from the Semitic point of view that Japanese have identified artifacts produced in their traditional culture as a Semitic play and have combined various elements according to strict rules. Through this, Japanese culture aim at two symmetries, the highest functionality and aesthetic perfection, and the aesthetic perception of artifacts. So if you imagine, compare this to the Japanese electronics or furniture, uh, you could understand what I mean. This, they aim two objects, highest functionality, and at the same time, the aesthetic perfection. So I prepare, before we continue, show some images in the website, Chinese gardens in the middle, Korean gardens, and in the third level, Japanese gardens. On the other hand, Korean traditional gardens have the characteristics that they were created in comparison with China and Japan, in particular with the uh, anthropogenetic elements. Yun Son Do I uh, evoked. He wanted to select a place where landscape was excellent in making a garden and to apply only minimal artificiality. It's a very big difference. So I told you Japanese people showed a bad genius, bad talented for manipulating uh, the artificial uh, way, the artifacts, they really appreciate it. But for Korean peoples, they don't like uh, any kind of artificial, uh, artificial manipulation. But be careful. When I uh, try to compare, I have no idea, my personal claim, what this is good, what this is bad, what this is high, what this is low. Be careful, you know, you know <laughs> because when I talk in, in Korea, it's very uh, almost impossible. Because when I claim something positive about, uh, about Japanese culture, the majority of my students consider me as a pro, global Japanese. <sighs> it's very dangerous. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, very anti national. It's a, it's, a, it's a big pity when we, you know, we, we could have a knowledge of object knowledge of science when you have some ideological, it's a very bad thing. But anyway, it's a Spain, there's no uh, risk uh, yeah, when I <laughs> claim for something <laughs> good for Japan. <laughs> On the other hand, the Korean traditional gardens have the characteristics that they were created in comparison with China. In particular, uh, so, yeah, this is the place of the Yun Son Do. I, uh, discovered for, for the purpose of my paper and for the purpose of my understanding. Uh, what is genius that in the mountain even he tried to uh, construct a garden in a very natural way. Buyongdong, which is located in, the, in, the, in the, an island, Bogito, the fielder surveyed on site created a small garden where Gosan, the master of Feng Shui thought, selected out, and they concentrated the essence of the natural landscape, embroidered with water and rocks. It reminds us that we aim to make an open garden. Yeah, this is kind of open garden, like the Gunzokdong forest in Henam, creating the entire path from the valley to the top of the mountain, 
as garden space, also is immortality that made the natural landscape itself while minimizing man-made. It can be said to be a masterpiece. So, of course, in the middle, uh, I visited this garden just uh, two months ago, but the other mountains, uh, uh, the mountain gardens, they all disappeared. Now the government has found to re uh, restore the gardens. But uh, I tried to climb this side, but there's nobody. I was afraid, so I give up. <laughs> so. A Korean garden so is natural, simple, and unforeseen. This is some general characteristics. The garden involves both the people within and the buildings in an unforced and at times irregular asymmetry, where the total landscape flows in a natural and a progressive way without being forced or literalized. The vernacular of the Korean garden generally includes evergreen trees, uh, generally Korean pine, as a constant and a flowering pear trees in the spring and the bamboo forest alongside the secondary entrance gates of temples and the palaces symbolize and fidelity and honesty. It's a very uh, uh, general uh, metaphor, the bamboo or the pine uh, signify the fidelity and the honesty. Terrace tend to follow natural courses, and unlike the traditional Japanese uh, the Chinese garden, the use of a straight paths is not prescribed, but lessened. Significant or important elements tend to face east, and the Korean readings of Pungshu are regarded with great care and the German sea was a strong influence in aligning the gardens with the uh, steel and the holes and the buildings. So just, just a, a small anecdote. When I, when I introduced some uh, 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 Western tourists, when I show, I, I walked with them in the garden and they finally they put the question, so where's the garden? Where's the garden? That means that he don't realize that there was garden. They were so natural, so trivial, so banal. There's no walls, there's no building, no architecture. I showed you a garden. Oh, where's the garden? The, on a, the, the author, me, compared Chinese, Japanese, and Korean gardens and identified some characteristics unique to the traditional Korean gardens. These include lack of enclosures. No words, use of brown on landscape, this general tendency, and infrequency, almost absence of man-made structures within Korean gardens, and use of additional uh, different plants, and extensive use of symbolic poems, etc., etc. How about the difference between Chinese garden and the Japanese gardens? The main difference between Chinese and Japanese gardens is that Chinese gardens tend to be more bold, exotic. It's like the very, very uh, strange stones or rocks. You can easily uh, uh, find the difference. And more orna uh, ornamental, and have more architecture and uh, structures throughout a park-like setting. Compared to Japanese gardens, which tend to be more subdued, austere, and minimalist overall. Yes, I think it's a, uh, quite general uh, uh, compositions. One of the main differences between Japanese and the Chinese gardens is that Chinese gardens are usually designed to be a series of, a series of uh, concealed scenes. Concealed scene, that means that that means that one step on another landscape. That means that you can have uh, uh, Western starlight the, the dominating uh, sceneries. You can get have a, uh, in a whole landscape in a side. There is a, a series of very surprising uh, you can ex expect the other landscape is what, what will be done like that. And 
With each turn, a new scene is presented. Japanese strolling gardens or Kaiyushiki and tea gardens on your right side, rosy, are very similar in this way. Chinese garden is meant to be experienced along the journey of a path, and entire garden should not be seen from one particular viewpoint. This is very different from the Japanese gardens that have developed over time, excluding strolling, uh, strolling garden and tea garden styles. Concerning architectural structures, one of the striking difference that you will notice right away in a Chinese garden is the amount of architecture and the structures that are used in the garden. Many pavilions and pagodas, uh, meditation areas, small house, etc., etc. They are used to break up the garden and provide each window or angle with a different uh, view, uh, view from within. Garden trees and the flowers. Chinese gardens are open aiming at preserving a natural appearance of the landscape. In, in this garden, it's very similar to the uh, Korean garden. Nature at times can seem like it is taking over the garden or at least wildness is dominating. That means the trimming and the pruning of trees is quite very rare as it took up to minimum. The Japanese, on the contrary, a long tradition of heavily pruning and thinning of the branches and the leaves has taken place. Shrubs and perfectly sculptured sculpture into mounds that nestle together with boulders and trees. This gives the Japanese gardens a very precise and highly maintained look to the gardens. It's a big difference. You can uh, relatively easily recognized the, the Japanese style. Both Chinese and the Japanese gardens do highlight the fact that human beings and nature are coexisting. However, I see the Chinese gardens uh, showcase this with the balance of poles and natural landscapes with man-made structures like pavilions and Japanese gardens lean more towards a scene of more naturally occurring elements that have been adjusted or manipulated by men here and there. So we can uh, present a kind of dichotomy, nature or artifice. Japanese garden is more artificial and Chinese and Korean garden is more natural. Well, I don't know. In any case, in grasping the essence of East Asian garden art, the core is never dichotomous and exclusive of two aesthetic perceptions. That attempt to grasp the beauty that is expressed by chance in nature and the beauty that is the perfect form achieved through human acts. It is difficult to grasp the relationship. But, as you know, whole philosophy of East Asian civilization is based upon this principle of complementarity, in and the yang. Never, never exclusion, mutual separation. Some words, East Asian garden as a micro, uh, uh, microcosm and heterotopia. According to French uh, philosopher Michel Foucault, the garden is heterotopia. Heterotopia, what is heterotopia? Heterotopia is a single real space. They have the power to juxtapose several spaces which are incompatible by themselves with the several places. Gardens, which is the smallest fragment of the world, the totality of the world. Since the ancient times, it is kind of happy and universal heterotopia, according to this philosopher, heterotopia. As Foucault mentioned, the garden Firms, all these form in this category of other species, other, uh, other uh, uh, utopia. It also preserves the most accomplished form of heterotopia because it indicates the conceptual of the duality of the microcosm, a microcosm, and the grand universe of microcosm. For example, the secret garden of the 15th century in Italy, in, even in Europe 
we call the Giardini Segreti, a closely intentionally, intentionally created microcosm and microcosm. Contrary to the Parisian mentioned by Michel Foucault, East Asian did not have the desire to realize carpet gardens that uh, synthesize the symbolic perfection of the world, but they too were immersed in presenting the miniaturated ideal universe, familiar with the Taoism and the Confucian traditions. The landscape testified to this uh, phenomena. A French sinologue, Stein, in this respect, followed uh, another uh, French uh, sinologue, Marcel Granet, the East Asian concept of nature is not based on instinctive feelings, nor on the concept of pure harmony, but rather on the complexity of the environmental based on religious beliefs. In these miniature landscapes, one universe vision is actually projected. Mountain, rivers, and forests are represented by stone, water, and small trees. These elements, these three elements must always exist because the whole forms a complete landscape. In the mountains that form an essential element of this reduced landscape, caves are frequently seen. These caves are associated with the ferocious notion of meditation and mystical ecstasy. The vision of analogy or homology of microcosm and microcosm forms the basis of East Asian qualities and their imagination to think in a final world. So the easiest way to understand what I'm talking about is microcosm, microcosm. Your body is a small universe. In that universe, you can find the whole universe. This is a kind of a homological thinking. So in, the, in a Buddhist dictum, you can find the universe, you can discover the universe in the one just piece of the rice. That kind of uh, homological thinking. In fact, this is true because in one, just one piece of rice, to, to understand, to explain the nature of the one piece of rice, you need some whole knowledge of the universe, the origin of the universe, origin of the life, origin of the uh, material like that, something like that. This is core of a semantic principle East Asian garden space. In other words, entering the space of the garden does not simply stay on the level of enjoying visual pleasure in the new environment, but break the framework of customary habits and redemption, planning an expansion of consciousness through a completely different phenomenological experience and planning a new universe. Well, as you know, the, I showed the uh, uh, American uh, architect Pei, uh, Chinese. Uh, why I showed this architect? Because he was born in Suzhou, the great city of Garden, and he designed this famous Suzhou uh, museum. I visited two times. Well, he inspired and he applied this. Uh, East Asian philosophy to this Suzhou museum. He expressed his philosophy of using Chinese garden design elements in modern architecture design. In Harvard as Asia Pacific Review, I quote him, Chinese gardens are very unusual in the sense that you can create a microcosm of the world in such tiny space and that was always been in my mind, so that I am never discouraged when I don't have as much room to work with. I can always say, look at the Suzo goddess, and what wonders you can create with them. It is a sense of scale. It is obvious that Chinese garden design principles have inspired Pei's modern architectural design. Chinese garden design elements have been major components in his work in modern built environment. What I suspect is another, uh, another uh, example of the uh, Korean iconography of the Socian Gardens. Well, this 
this guy in this iconographic work, you can find exactly the same principle of the microcosm and microcosm. Every single uh, entity, every single place of the garden designate another world, one portion of the universe like that. I have five minutes. I can skip. You stop when I was <laughs> okay. Now I prepare some section symmetries and points of water and stone. There are many elements uh, in gardens, but for me, two main elements is water and stone. This is my theory. This to understand the prototype of research in garden, yes. It could be compressed into the surface of water and the red stones. Uh, before pursuing my uh, theory, just let me book, let me mention five key elements of East Asian garden. Especially in the case of China, is is uh, is perfect, well uh, uh, adaptable. They are water and the plants, architecture and the rocks, and tracery windows. That means borrowed views. In addition, gardens are enclosed by pavilions, verandas, halls, and walls, etc. The space in the garden are formed by architecture. The main difference between Western and Eastern gardens and their basic elements lies in the use of architecture and not in vegetation. Verandas with its tracery windows and zigzag uh, breaches over the pond lead to more mystery and wonder. Yeah, I think wonder is a very uh, key concept because we could not expect any, any one single uh, landscape. Another element in Chinese garden is stone. A stone may serve as a central theme of a courtyard. Uh, well, it is a place on a pedestal in a pond or uh, cemented together to form caves or pigs, etc., etc. In the private garden, a large body of water is not possible, but a pond is a must. A bridge usually is built across narrow channels or causeways. As you see, water, plants, stone, and rocks. And finally, tracery windows. So in the garden, in China garden, in Eastern garden, generally you should move. You cannot have any one place to meditate stop. Scenery and the track is another characteristic of a classical garden in East Asia. Gardens are different in shape and size. The large garden is naturally divided into more courtyard, and each courtyard has its particular theme in order to create a particular feeling of a place. Because of a courtyard are interconnected, they create a series of spaces that have special meanings. As one enters a small entry leading to a garden and walks into a particular space, although it is usually small in scale and rapid, around the window or winding verandas, the feeling gain is always the same as repose, harmony, serenity, and elegance. The purpose of this case study is to analyze and interpret the classical garden design elements. So nature elements in design, left to landscaping, water, courtyard, and stone, all these elements are integral part of a classical garden that create poetic and painterly feelings create a place of natural beauty with a serene and elegant atmosphere. Through the use of this concept, a unique garden architecture was created. Poetry, prose, painting, music, is all together. The, this kind of uh, intermediality in East Asia is very important. Intermediality between writing, calligraphy, poem, in other hand, and also garden. So when you enter garden, you could find a, f a kind of co very confused feeling. This is kind of uh, painting, landscaping, or garden, something like that. Anyway, one media evoked to, uh, to, to other media. Of course, the media not brush or paper, <laughs> but led a process where there is a never final stroke of the pen or a last word, and which is a continuous state of change. 
It is the placement of the elements which make a garden such as water, rocks, trees, and flowers, architecture, and space, as well as the utilization of the effects of natural phenomena, including the change of seasons, light, color, shadow, etc., etc. So architecture in a garden serves to frame or emphasize a good view. Veranda on both sides of the world become what is called double veranda, and the wall between them can be pierced with tracery windows, etc. So bridge, more mystery and wonder could be presented to observers. So sometimes it will blend on the way up hill, reach an edge of a pool, pass through the flower beds and cross valleys, twisting and seeming there, etc., etc. All images show this kind of the trace, the uh, sceneries, barrel sceneries, uh, etc. So you can find any straight line. Huh? Intentional garden aesthetics in East Asia, water and rock are more than just maturity. They are material signs that suggest nature's immutability. And at the same time, they are symbolic signs of ethical values that the four generations should pursue. So, very important metaphorics, water elements. The most common water element of East Asia garden is a pond. The pond is usually situated in the center of the garden. Larger gardens will have a lake instead of a pond. The other elements of garden will be arranged around the pond. Some ponds have a fish in them, like a goldfish. In East Asia, water symbolizes communication and dreams. A water element is a, also a welcome complement to the rock garden and the mountains. If you the uh, clash uh, of Confucius, Confucius compared the highest perfect uh, personality to the water. Yeah, to think about like water, behave like water. Water doesn't speak, but water is always follows the natural laws like that. Thus, the stones and the rocks expressed in East Asian gardens represent not only simple aesthetic effects of the visual landscape, but also represent metaphorical chains and moral metaphysical values that have been preserved for thousands of years in East Asian civilization. The core of semantic implications of water in East Asian garden is expression of the profound spirituality that transcends materiality. In particular, the utility of water used in East Asian gardens is medium that enables various sensory experiences such as sound, light, moistures. For example, the water fall on the uh, rocky uh, rocks of the crystal garden of Gosandong uh, in, in the Korean garden, which purifies all kinds of worldly noises, allows us to forget self and immerse ourselves into the world of imagination, freshness, Su Jung Yang was named. Yes, this is, uh, uh, now so, uh, talk about uh, the rocks and stones. The semiotic semantics associated with stones in East Asian natural aesthetics, including gardens, also have complexities not found in Western civilization. Gusan is the most artist and creative figure of stone in East Asian gardens. Gardeners. It is no exaggeration to say that the semiotic Dongchen Sokshil, I climb here up and stay for several hours, is the beauty of Gusan's rock utilization. Another example, the flowering, stagnant, uh, falling water, uh, this kind of social one. Yes, beauty, but also there's uh, some metaphoric, metaphysical meaning in that. Why East Asian peoples like the water and appreciate the water like that? The another uh, uh, figure, Lao Tzu, compared, uh, the founder of Taoism, he compares the water-oriented nature of the low place to human life. So that it is a place of choice toward a low place, Shim So Yun, deep, hot like a nail, a woman to be generously favored, a good face, 
not two roosters, blah, blah, blah. It's all kinds of metaphorics compared with the imagination of water. In short, the most beautiful life is living by modeling the nature of water. Another example, the flower in the blah, 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 I, I will skip, and so, and this kind of, you can find very bizarre, very exotic uh, rocks in the China, especially in Chinese garden. What does it represent it? There are many theories. There are many theories, but you can find very easily the eyes of dragon. But why there's uh, holes in the rocks? Well, in simple terms, it designates the limited life of human life. For example, there's a windy and uh, so the deformation. Bizarre stones with a hole, hollow holes in the form of dragon eyes were considered by the Asian Chinese to carry the energy of life that brings life to the universe. The first interpretation, uh, the rocks represent the world's creativity, just as the mountains represent the power to create the world. For example, the mountain, the concept of mountain is so different in East Asia and, uh, and, uh, and, and the, uh, the West side. Well, in five minutes, I will conclude. Uh, time is uh, uh, I will show just two images, the iconic images in the So this is the very important concept of the uh, battle of the scenery, Shakei, Jiejin, and Chagyong in Korea. The most key elements in understanding the artistic and aesthetic principle of the East Asian gardens. So what does it mean, battle of scenery? is an epitome of a successful garden. So I will show. You know, uh, this is not simply the background. It's, if you understand like this, you don't understand what nature of the, this this principle is inside. It's a it's whole part of the, the whole scenery. It's no separation, a figure and a ground. And if you find, I show the, like that, I, I visited, for example, the, uh, the third one. Uh, in Korean is Yongwansa, uh, Yongaksa. Uh, you can find a very magical feeling because the mountain is almost far from two kilometers, but you feel that the mountain is before your eyes. <laughs> the very ma magical, magical technique. <laughs> So this is why this is, this principle uh, Shakai uh, Chagya was borrowed the uh, ski uh, Ban Skiura, Ban what the, 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 the architect of uh, Japanese architecture who designed the uh, uh, mess uh, and uh, humble uh, all kinds you see I uh, in right of uh, photos uh, but when I was here uh, yeah this mountain is. I don't know how they invent this kind of illusion, uh, but anyhow, uh, there's no separation. No? It's a garden of entrusy, entrusy, as a near to the uh, near to the the Tokyo. Uh, but another another case is uh, the Pegundong. Uh, I I I visited. I stayed here uh, for whole days because I was so fascinated by this. Uh, uh, borrow the landscape or borrow the sceneries. Gangjin uh, on uh, uh, Annex. Yes, this was exactly the same principle. So this location, uh, number number uh, number three. Okay, number three. From this point, you can get the very beautiful landscape, the world sun, sun the mount, whole mountains. But you can get uh, no separation. Uh, if you can get the feeling the mountains before your eyes. So inside, integrating your landscape, not separation, it's just background. It's totally different. And the last chapter is 
What's the meaning of the specialty in East Asian gardens? Well, it's very difficult questions, very difficult questions. For example, this is an iconic garden of Japan. I think if you raise the question, what's the most iconic garden in Japan for the whole humanity is the iconic garden, Ryuwanji. I think Ryuwanji is located in Kyoto. I beat it several times. Well, many theories about uh, those arrangement of stones. There are 15 stones. What does it mean, the number of 15? What does the intention, purpose of this uh, special arrangement? Well, there are many theories. It's uh, just tennis court to uh, scale, but it's more. Different interpretation. But some people, they, yes, these uh, uh, represent five uh, pebbles, represent sea, sea, and the stones are living in the center of the island, etc., etc. Uh, uh, and the, uh, the garden is to, to meant to be from the city to the position, like that. You know, people, if you visit Ryuanji, you sit down here and you could have a time to meditate or to enjoy uh, this garden. Uh, the stones are placed so that the entire composition cannot be seen at once from the veranda. They are also arranged so that when looking at the garden from any angle, only 14 of the boulders are visible at one time. It is traditionally said that only through attaining enlightenment, a great saint or great thinker, would one be able to view the 15th boulder, I think from with your eye of the heart, not eye of your <laughs> face. The world behind the garden is an important element of the garden. It is made of clay which has been stained by age with the softer brown and orange stone, etc., etc. So what's the meaning of garden? I will skip. It's so complicated, but there are many theories. Finally, some Gunter Nishka, he wrote, he wrote a book about this garden. The garden at Ryuanji does not symbolize anything. It's a very provocative idea. Or more precise, to avoid any misunderstanding, the garden of Ryuanji does not symbolize, nor does it have the value of reproducing a natural beauty that one can find in the real or mystical world. So what's that? I consider said it to be an abstract composition of natural objects in space. A composition whose function is to incite meditation as a, like uh, abstract paintings or Rosco, something like that. It's uh, foolish to find out any uh, figure to meaning. It's just abstraction to incite your meditation. Okay, I stop it and thank you for your attention. Thank you for coming here. If you have any questions, I uh, would, would like to try to answer. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Unfortunately, the Korean style was not very uh, influential in <coughs> Western uh, modern civilization and architecture or uh, design. But this is a good subject. I, uh, but I can reply the, uh, in a precise way to your <laughs> question. But I think the, the real impact is, uh, of, of, for example, Van Gogh. Van Gogh, you know. I, la, last year, I, I attended a special uh, exhibition in Tokyo. Well, I was very surprised because I, I realized that uh, Van Gogh was influenced very strongly, much more strongly than I expected by the Japanese, by Japanese uh, stamp, the Japanese uh, prince. Well, that means the Japanese style is so universal. People love it, like it. But in Korea, we can get an objective knowledge of a Japanese style. Because when you uh, talk about Japanese style, it's, it's, it's the connotation is so negative. We say, man, means that the students are the victim of this ideological education. Surely, really. So when here, for example, the uh, co uh, compare the Japanese garden and Korean garden, Ch Korean garden is much more natural, prefer natural uh, beauty uh, on the contrary, Japanese garden uh, prefer a kind of a artificial beauty like that or the dichromization, and then they implicitly implicitly argue that the Korean beauty, Korean asset is a really high level then because Korean, uh, our ancestors uh, really strongly understood the nature of it like that. I can't agree with, that, with, with this kind of <laughs> ideological interpretation. I try to uh, observe, describe it in such a way, such it is, such it is. Uh, not putting the, my uh, uh, the personal ideas. Uh, but your question is a very huge question, I think, very, very huge question. Très bien. Dans un jardin. Il y a beaucoup de jardins au temple, mais c'est tellement naturel. Il n'y a pas de, de mur, tout ça. Il n'y a pas de manipulation, euh, voilà, tout ça. Donc on n'est pas conscient, c'est vraiment un jardin. C'est ça, c'est le jardin.
natural landscape here, or mm. if you, what do you feel when mm. you see mm. our landscape? Just as, as a simple. Well, question. no, very, very big question, <laughs> very bold question. First of all, I love so much Spain as a nation of uh, cultural and escape. I visited several sites, regions, Barcelona, and uh, Arcevia, and the Andalusia region, and this time the Garcia. Of course, I love the Spanish food, like the Korean people. But Korea now, the Spain become at the second state nation after, after France. Many young students prefer now Spain. I don't know why, but they are very fascinated by some kind of uh, uh, similarities like that. But concerning the landscape, I just enjoy the <laughs> small uh, promenade, small walk with Professor Bazgago with his friend in the near to the uh, Santiago, so, yeah, there was a very beautiful uh, landscape. It's quite universal landscape in the very beautiful for, for forest. But, you know, it's a big difference anyway in East Asian civilization and the European civilization. I am really guilty too much idealize this garden because why? The European civilization, you were lucky to preserve architecture. But this is not the case, the East Asian civilization. Of course, we have traditional classical architecture, but not the building, not the universal urbanism. After modernization, Seoul, Tokyo, Beijing, Shanghai, whole Cities were destroyed, modernized. It's a big loss for the humanity. So Europe is an exception. No, I don't know which is exception or not. That's why East Asian people love to visit <laughs> European nations because you have the architecture. Architecture is very important because this kind of uh, telephone or mobile is so ephemeral, it's passing. It's in five years, it's disappeared. But architecture is permanent, much more permanent than human beings. So I am an admirer of the architecture. But what's going on in East Asia? If you look at the Tokyo in Seoul, of course you can find some place, special places, not in general areas. It's a big difference. It's a, it's kind of very exceptional cases, exceptional experiences. But in Europe, in Paris, in Corona, in Sevilla, in Barcelona, you enjoy in every day the architecture, well preserved. I think it's a big uh, difference. Yeah. But uh, I would like to uh, preserve still silence because I, I don't know much about the knowledge about the history of uh, the, the, your, your landscape. My general feeling is that. But I'm very interested in the, in the architecture. This is something we lost completely East Asian people in the, from the modern times. Because the, another reason is that your civilization is a, a civilization of stone, and our civilization is a civilization of the, uh, the, 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 the bois. The, the, the wood, big difference. Your civilization is of the pan, bang, bread. Our civilization is a rice. Big, big difference. Your civilization is a fork and knife, is very violent, very rude. And our civilization is baguette and spoon, especially baguette. It's a big difference. Your civilization is a phonetic civilization, so alphabetic mind. Our civilization is based upon the ideographic mind. Very ambiguous, ambiguous people, very implicit. So when Japanese people, yes, 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 it does not make you agree, no, yes, yes, yes. Be careful when you make a negotiation with the Japanese people. Okay, yes, 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 that doesn't make you agree, no, no, no. I simply understood your opinion, yeah. I, it's 
even for me, if, uh, as a polyglot, I can speak English and I, I'm very educated in, from the Western education. Even for me, because my native language, my, my, my mind is dominated by Asian mind, so I'm very difficult to say no. I just say yes, 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 but no is very difficult. For, for. Uh, El Chinjon is the, the sorry, is, is the most hard, hardest word, to, <laughs> but for East Asian people, the most hardest word is no. Very, very difficult word to say no. <laughs> that means that there are many kinds of confusion. Be careful. Yeah. This is very Galician as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah, why not? So I will. <laughs> We love you, love you, love her, yeah. Uh, so I will try. I did not yet, but I will try because to compare the Korean uh, octopus menu and the uh, Galician octopus menu. But we have a very special, very hot sauce, gochujang. Uh, when we uh, eat the octopus, uh, it's, it must be a very hot sauce. I think I could invent a new menu in Galice. <laughs> With this source, special source of Korea. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. So, thank you very much. I think that if uh, nobody wants to, to ask more questions, I think that I want to, to thank you. To, thank you very much. To come here and to, well, to, to, to give such a nice uh, lecture about the Asian garden. So, we hope you, if you come again next time, to have you here. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much.